All right, so the first thing I'd like to do in this section is to make sure that my plane doesn't go flying off the screen. Um, there's a fairly simple way I'm going to do that. I'm just going to create an invisible object and layer it around the top, bottom, and sides of my screen. So to begin with, I actually need a sprite if I'm going to do collision events. So I'm going to create a new sprite. And I'm just going to create one. So I'm going to make do edit and just do a new one under File New, rather than doing pulling something in and creating it from a strip. So I'm going to make a 32 by 32. I'm going to use the paint bucket and fill it in with black. And that's all I want. I'm going to use this along the edges and the top eventually. So I guess I'll call this Edge Sprite. Now I want my plane to behave a little bit differently depending on whether it hits the left and right or the top and bottom. So I'm going to create a new object. So let me call this left right object. It's going to have that sprite and it's going to be solid. So what I would like to have happen is when the my plane object collides with this left right, it's going to remove the horizontal movement, but it's going to leave the vertical movement alone. So if I'm going at an angle, it'll kind of slide along. So I'm going to go into my plane at a collision event with the left right. And all this is going to do is it's going to set my horizontal speed to zero. So in my plane, when I collide to the left right, horizontal speed is zero. In my room, I'm going to layer this left right along the sides. So I'm holding down shift. I'm putting a bunch of these in. This is going to take a moment, especially if I miss. Do, 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 do. And away we go. Now, one other thing about left, right, besides being solid, I'm going to make it so it is not visible. So I'm going to uncheck this visible checkbox. If an object has a sprite, but it's not visible, it still does collisions. So in the room, I can see the, my invisible sprites. But when I run this, notice they don't appear on the sides. If I go and wander into it, I actually run into the wall, though. I'm going to want a similar thing for the top and bottom. So I'm going to create a different object, uh, top, bottom object. It's going to have the same barrier. It's going to be solid and not visible. This thing I'm going to layer along the very top and the very bottom. When my plane collides with the top bottom one, I'm going to set my vertical speed to zero. Collision, top bottom, vertical speed, zero. So the basic idea is that I'm containing my plane using these invisible objects it runs into. So for it to run into these, I should place those in the room. Now a tricky thing, how do I know which object it is? So is it a top, bottom, or left, right? Well, down here at the bottom where it says object, if you hover your mouse over it, it'll actually tell you which one it is. So that one is a top, bottom. That one is a left, right. And that's how you can tell invisible objects that have no sprite. You can tell the difference between those as well by hovering your mouse over it. So I'm on top, bottom. I should put those in at the top as well. So if I run this, all right, so it actually keeps me from going down off the bottom. My plane is contained. Outstanding. So I would like to make an enemy that takes multiple hits to destroy. So I think I'm going to start with this enemy too. I'm going to make it take three hits to destroy this guy. I could try and use lives to do that. The problem with lives is that lives is something called a global variable. So any kind of global variable, there's only one of them in the game. So if I subtract from lives, I'm subtracting lives from everywhere in the game. So I would do three hits to one plane, and it would destroy every plane. Not exactly what I want. 
What I want to do is change something that each enemy gets on its own. That's called a local variable. So local variables that we've looked at before, every plane has an x, a y, direction, speed. So I want to create something like those, something that every single object has. So enemy 2, I'm going to create a new variable here in the create event. Under control, I'm going to set variable. Now as long as I use a name that's not built into GameMaker, I can name this variable whatever I want, well, using letters and numbers. So if I say hits, for example, I know that's not built into GameMaker. And I'm going to create three hits. Do not use relative here, by the way. I want to set it to exactly three. If I try and do relative, it thinks I'm adding to a hits variable, which I've never created. That's not good. So I'm going to set variable hits to three. When this guy has a collision with my bullet, so I'm going to add a collision with my bullet, I need to make it so that, first of all, I should probably destroy the my bullet, otherwise it'll slowly go through the plane, doing damage to it at every step it's going through. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy the my bullet, which is the other thing here. So destroy the my bullet. Now I need to subtract one from the hits variable that I created a moment ago. As long as I use the same name, I'm fine. So minus one relative. Make sure you use exactly the same capitals, lowercase. If you put underscores in, don't forget your underscores. Has to match exactly with the one that I created in the create event here. So I'm subtracting one from hits. Now I should check to see if I've destroyed this guy. So I'm going to do the test variable next door to this one. You could say if hits is equal to zero, there is a very remote possibility that it got hit by two bullets at exactly the same time though. So in that case it would jump past zero and go to negative one. So I'm actually going to say smaller than one. So if hits is smaller than one, I need to do something. I already have an explosion here for enemies, so I'm just going to make this guy change himself into the explosion. And if you remember from the previous demonstration, I actually have to say yes here so that it slows down that animation and explosion. If this performs a create event and an explosion, it's create event, I change the speed that it animates. This guy's not on a path in my game, so I don't need to end the path before changing into the explosion. All right, so there's the plane. One, two, three. Outstanding. So I've been able to make a multi-hit enemy. That's cool. What about a boss? So the thing about bosses is they tend to be much more difficult to destroy than other enemies in the game. So maybe the boss should take like 10 or 20 or 100 hits or whatever you decide. The other thing they tend to have is they tend to behave differently and follow different patterns um, during the game. So in the example I'm going to create, I'm going to actually have a boss that has two different behaviors. It's going to follow a path, and then when it reaches the end of the path, it'll sit there firing homing bullets at me. So following the path, it's just going to fire straight down regular enemy bullets, e-bullets. And then when it reaches the end of the path, it's going to sit there firing homing bullets at me and then switch back to a path. I need to create a sprite for this guy. So both of these different objects are going to use the same sprite. Boss sprite. So let me create this. Oh, which of these things looks like a boss? Probably this big plane over here. So let's see, that's obviously not going to fit, so maybe 96. Yeah, that's about right. So first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to erase the blue out. So let me erase a color. And then I'd like to flip it so it's facing down. So mirror vertically. There we go. 
This guy I want to center probably about there. So I'm going to have him fire out of there. So this is a sprite I'm going to use for two different objects, both the path object and the homing object. So I should make a path for my boss. So let me create that. This will be my boss path. Maybe something like that. Sure, that looks good to me. So I'm going to have him kind of do a zigzag pattern. So to begin with, I'm going to create the boss path. So the boss path object is going to use this sprite. And he, when he is created, will start following this boss path I just made. So under move, this blue squiggly line, follow the boss path, speed of, I don't know, maybe three or something. At the end, he's going to stop, and relative is fine. I'm going to have him move based on where the boss, where the boss is placed. So I'm going to place him in the room down here close to where my guy is. Let me remove some of this so I can see it a little better. And place the boss in. That is a top bottom block, boss path. There we go. Okay, so he's moving. Looks like he's following the path pretty well. Good. 